what, how does it feel to be the lead role in a really big, brilliant movie and no one actually sees your face? <laughs> um, it feels good. Yeah, if, uh, you know, um, I'm a long-term fan of uh, of the character of Dread, and so to be given the opportunity to uh, uh, to play the character um, uh, was one that I couldn't turn down. Um, so if you could go back and, and, and tell us, or 13 year old, uh, y yourself when you were 13, that one day you'd be playing Judge Dredd, I mean, how do you think you would have reacted? Well, I don't think I would be one, would be with complete disbelief, I would have thought. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's you, I never really think about the synergy of that until someone like yourself asks. Um, but um, I think that the really great thing about uh, making this movie was you know, going back and rereading those comics that I that I read as a teenager, and then also discovering a whole plethora of stories that have been written, you know, after I stopped reading it, and to sort of really see the um, the maturity and the writing develop and the depth of the character that that um, uh, that, that that evolved. And do you, do you find there's a, a sort of a sense of pressure taking on a role like this? Because comic book fans can be quite protective, in a sense, over their favourite their favorite roles and characters. Yeah, sure. But I mean, you know, in the same sense, I, you know, being a long-term fan, I, I um, you know, probably put uh, a lot of pressure on myself. Um, you know, and certainly, it, it, you know, I wouldn't do myself any favours to um, uh, be concerned about fan expectations, you know, while I'm making the movie. You know, I get... Um, my job is to, you know, bring this character to life in uh, in the most dimensional way that I can. And when I'm making a film, that's what I'm focused on, not so much what other people think. But alternatively, are we talking of pressure? Do you find that there's almost less pressure on the film, given the relatively sort of low budget in comparison to other big sort of superhero movies? Um, I don't know if, 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 if budget has anything to do with it. Um, you know, I just... I just know that th that this is the the dread film that that fans have been waiting, uh, you know, for over forty years for, and uh, and, and I just I just feel uh, really kind of humbled and proud to be a part of it. Of course, dread isn't actually a superhero; he's just a man. So, how mm. important was it to find that kind of humanity within the role? That was key. Uh, I think the mistake would be to try and play the icon. Um, you know, I, I, I sort of figured out pretty early on that finding the humanity of the character was everything because as he said he is just a man he doesn't have superpowers he's just an, uh, an ordinary man with an, an extraordinary skill set he's highly trained and his heroism is defined by the fact that he's actually walking into a building when everyone else is running out and you find it kind of easier to, re to relate and prepare for a role when he hasn't got superpowers and he is well he is a bit stronger than your everyday person but mm. he's, he's just a regular person um, no, well, I mean, you know, it was quite a challenge, you know, preparing for this film, uh, you know, f getting physically into the into the right condition that you know I needed to be, and then you know, obviously, you know, the mindset of the character that's that's something uh, completely challenging, different in its own regard. Um, but you know, I um, you know I trained hard. I got hold of every single Dread comic that I could, uh, and uh, and really that was uh, that was the starting point. And it looks like, from what we can see in the film, that the, the costume looks quite heavy. Was that quite difficult to do combat scenes in, in such a big outfit? Yeah, it was, it was certainly a challenge, but, you know, I think that, you know, the uniform is reflective of the world in which Dread lives in. It's a mean world, and it's a world on the, on the teetering on the brink, brink of collapse and chaos. And, um, you know, Dread is a desperate, a desperate measure for a desperate time. Uh, and, um, yeah... Have you been able to take over any souvenirs, the mask, perhaps? I got, I got the helmet. Uh, I tried to nick it three times before they actually gave it to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do have the helmet. And just finally, tell us what, uh, what it's like working with, um, uh, sorry, Pete Travis. I mean, he's quite, he's relatively sort of early on in his career. Just how bright a future do you think he has in, in directing? Um, well, you know, I think that, uh, you know, uh, he will do what he does, and um, you know, for me, it was probably one of the most uh, amazing collaborative experiences that I've ever had. Um, you know, to my mind, the, I guess the, the, the real creative energy behind this film uh, is the writer, Alex Garland. Now, he was on set every day and, um, 
you know, when you talk about, you know, someone who has a singular passionate vision uh, about this project and, and, and then Alex is largely responsible for, for the movie you see. So when this, um, this passion, uh, when the writer and the director has this sort of passion, does that really rub off on the cast? Well, everybody was, uh, everybody uh, had that um, focus and attention to detail, you know. And we were blessed with, we were working with Anthony Dodd Mantle, who's um, an Oscar winning DP. He won the Oscar for Slumdog Millionaire. And I think that his, he brought a, a visual artistic sensibility that, you know, really elevated the material. It, it takes it to the next level. And, um, you know, so when you have, you know, that many talented, creative people on board, um, it's, a, it's a pretty good sign that uh, the movie's going to be well executed. Well, thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers.